Hello everybody, welcome to another video with me, Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Growth Channel. Today I'm joined with Little Poppy, Little Poppy the Dachshund. Say, say hello everybody. Hello, I don't know what this human's doing. There's no doubt that neurotypical people, non-autistics, and autistic people have some differences in their conversation styles. So today I'm going to be looking into the brain of the autistic individual to find out why. Why do they monologue? All in the video today, stay tuned. From my experience on this earth, talking to autistic people, talking to neurotypical people and looking back at my own life, I have picked up on the major differences in communication styles between these two brains. The autistic individual's tendency to monologue is not an unknown phenomenon. Phenomenon. Boop, boop, doo, doo, doo. If you've ever met an autistic person at a party or at a social event, you may pick up on just how sort of intense and direct and factual autistics can be. Because of this, I'm going to be giving you three reasons why autistics tend to monologue. The first reasons why autistics tend to monologue is because we find it very difficult to focus on emotional communication. People diagnosed on the autism spectrum struggle with recognizing and categorizing their own emotions. And we struggle even more to understand the emotions of other people. Because of this, it can be hard to communicate with feelings. Neurotypical people tend to place emotions and experiences over logic and facts in terms of social conversation. The emotions of the autistic individual can be displaced by facts or logical statements instead of emotionally connecting, expressing how you feel about something, expressing how you feel about someone doing something bad to you or something good that's happened in your life. Our brain places logic and facts a lot higher than emotions and feelings. And this monologuing sort of comes across as a debate and essay style method of communication. We do struggle to communicate and understand our own feelings, but it doesn't mean that we can't do it. It just requires a little bit more practice. Even if we do communicate with our feelings and emotions and we have a lot of experience in recognizing it in ourselves and in others, it still doesn't take away the fact that it's our default mode network. Meaning that in times of stress or in times of feeling overwhelmed, we will always resort back to this communication style because it is most natural for us. Number two. Autistic people tend to struggle with the subtle aspects of social communication, meaning stuff like facial expressions or body language or even just tone of voice. Because of this, we don't always know that we are either boring or annoying people, especially if we don't really know them very well. It can be quite overwhelming to talk to an autistic person if you don't have prior knowledge of Asperger's in general. These monologues can sometimes sound a bit too confrontational because they are direct and blunt and factual, and to some people this can come across as a verbal attack or something. Something like that. It's silly, I know. Hi there. The hell? Ah, silly. <laughs> no, stop. Bloody Siri. If we struggle to understand and interpret these subtle changes in body language and facial expressions, it can be very difficult for us to understand when we should stop talking. But hopefully you can understand why we struggle to understand when you're bored or not. Number three, we have poor theory of mind. Theory of mind is a concept that some autism researchers and psychologists have come up with. This is a concept where it's difficult for the autistic individual to understand how someone may be experiencing life. This is quite pronounced in autistic children. One of the typical examples for the theory of mind or mind blindness is the analogy of two children playing in a room where there is a play box and where there is a normal 
sort of wooden chest. When the other child goes out of the room, one of the children will grab the ball from the play box, play with it a little bit, and put it back in the wooden chest. The question that the psychologist would ask the suspected autistic child is that when the other child comes back into the room, they will ask them where they will look. The autistic kid will say that this child will check in the wooden box, the chest box, because it is there. This is because they can't appreciate the the difference in experience and understanding that this child who's gone out of the room has about the situation. The way that this expresses in autistic adults is a lot more subtle and less profound. If we are caught up in the intricacies and flow of conversation, we can often forget that just because we place our interests so highly, it doesn't mean that this other person is as interested in that topic as we are. Because of this, we can tend to monologue and go on about our special interests for days and days and days if someone lets us. And although some people like this style of conversation, it doesn't always mean that everyone's going to like it. So those are the three reasons why autistic people may monologue. Although they aren't completely applicable to every single autistic person, these are some of the things that I've sort of accumulated over my time interacting with other autistic people and analysing my own life. Another good reason to why we may monologue can be because we struggle with verbal communication, especially when we're trying to offer advice or talk about anything that's very emotional and difficult and abstract. Asperger's in general is described as a difficulty in social communication, so sometimes I have found we tend to dance around the subject rather than compile it into one statement because it's a bit boring, isn't it? I think I think so. Just because an autistic person tends to differ in their communication style, does it really mean that it's the wrong way of doing it? After all, everybody is different. Some people like talking about their emotions quite a lot and how they feel about stuff, whereas other people like to have more of a intellectual or logical type discussion. Do you agree with any of the things that I've said today? Please let me know down in the comments. Did you like the video? If so, please make sure to like it. Down there, just give it a little click, just one little click, one little like, and it would mean the world to me. And Poppy, who is now sleeping. Come on, you lazy bugger. Please give me a like, viewer. Thomas needs it. And if you want to see some more videos by me on a regular basis, make sure to click that subscribe button and click that little notification bell right next to it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later, folks.